Alright, hello everybody, this is Bino, and what I decided to do with this video is I'm going to talk through the way I do a DM tribute run. So what I've done is I've recorded uh, a run, and what I did was I actually took like the worst run I could get so I could show the things that could go wrong, right? Because we all watch the videos and you see a perfect run and you're like, oh, I can do that. And then you get in here and you try to do it. And it's really hard, right? You know, it's a steep learning curve. You can't get it right away. And the reason is, is because you haven't seen the things that could go wrong. So what I did is I recorded a run. I came in here, I got everything set up and I just waited for a little bit so that all the pads could move around so that I could get the weird set of pats so I can kind of show you where they go and then you know so the pulls aren't timed up perfectly so you can kind of see what's going on so I'll go ahead start it up and I'll just talk you through as I go all right so when I start I'm a torn warrior so I always use either a noggin fogger or a savior deviant delight because the littler hitbox makes this a lot easier I always come in jump up on this first ledge here and go around the pole. You can also go around the far side of the pole and jump up, but you're always going to pull that pack if you go around. I still caught it, but they'll reset. All right, so I'm going to look at this guy right here. Now, if I catch him back before he gets over there, it's easier to get through, but since he's already there, I'm just going to scatter shot him. This is one pad that you'll always completely miss if you come straight in the circle and you'll completely miss them if you come straight in and go and then the star pat there pats from the right side and goes right across where you need to run so you always want to make sure you check for them so i'm going to let the pats go by and then i'm going to set up for the first pull All right, pads are getting out. I'm gonna hop down off the ledge. And you have to make sure you hop down off the ledge before you summon your pet. Because if you summon him up on the ledge, he's either gonna bug out and not go, or he's gonna run down and pull the pack there to the right. So I'm gonna send him in on that first mob and then I'm gonna send him all the way back as far as I can so that he doesn't pull or so that he despawns when he does the pull. So I'm gonna send him in, I'm gonna send him back over there to those mobs with a sprint. Make sure you have some kind of movement and speed on your pet or the casters will slow him and he'll die. And then they'll turn right on you. Right here on this ledge is a respot point or a reset point, which I'm gonna use because that pad is right there. So I'm gonna hop up here, they're gonna reset, I'm gonna feign death, and I'm gonna wait for this pad to go by. Again, this is like the worst pat set that you can get. Usually you can come right through and if you come straight in and go, a lot of these pats wouldn't be there. But like I said, I waited so that the pats can start going so that you could see all the trouble spots. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to reset behind that pillar over there. If I get in trouble, I can scatter shot this guy to get over there, but I kind of want to save my scatter shot. I'm going to wait for my feign death cooldown so that as soon as I get over there I can feign death. That's the one thing that you really got to watch while you're doing these runs. You always want, before you're going to do something kind of risky, make sure your feign death cooldown is reset. So I'm going to go past, I pull him, I'm going to go behind the pillar, and that's where I'm going to feign death. Reset, get to the chest, pick up the key. Once I select, uh, get the key, I'm going to go across looking for that door. And I'm going to take this at an angle so that I can jump up on that far side and hopefully not pull that set of ads there. And now the boss is patting back. If he comes up the ramp, I have to feign death. If he goes straight across, I'm good. I won't aggro him. but there's that pat right there. I'm gonna go for it, I got plenty of time. I'm gonna hug close to the wall so I don't pull that other pack. 
I'm going to get here and open the door. And you have to watch because sometimes one of the pats will come down this ramp towards the door. So you don't want to come down here if there's a pat too close where you can't get the door. I did get lucky. The eye is right here. I'm going to take it out. Max rank arcane shot and an auto shot will kill the eyes. Call my pet back. I'm going to put him on stay right there in that corner. And that way it pulls the mobs away from me so that potentially I don't get a uh, cripple and I'm going to have him attack and then run away, pull the mobs. I'm going to go down and I like to line up on the left side for the next pull because it makes it easier to see. So I'm going to get down here, my pet despawn, feign death, get right back up once I'm out of combat, get my pet back up, get that cooldown going again. Give my pet a good uh, mend, get him going, make sure the cripple is off of him before I do the next pull because if he's slow, he could get killed and that's just going to slow me down some more. Send him in, then I'm going to send him back and attack that mob back there. He's going to go. My goal is to get as far down here as I can so that my pet doesn't die. Sometimes he will, sometimes there's just nothing you can do. That time he despawned, feign death. As soon as it's up, I'm going to hop back up, get that cooldown going. For this next pull, you really want to make sure your feign death is ready to go. You can't have no delay on it. And you want to make sure your pet is topped up all the way just in case. Because you can't really see where the boss is at. You can only kind of gauge it. You want to be able to stall on the corner. So you and your pet needs to be able to take a couple of hits. So you want to make sure he's at full health. I'm going to send him in on the swarmer and then send him back to that group back there. So that he can despawn when I go around the corner over here. So he aggros. Make sure you run through the middle of the trees because there's a pod on both sides. If you pop a pod, see bad luck. The boss is right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right to the corner. I aggro him. Do not feign death as soon as you aggro him. Because sometimes he'll charge, and if you feign death when he charges, it'll get batched. Use your feign death, you'll wipe right here. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay here. When he goes around the corner, like right there, I'm going to pop back up, get my feign death cooldown going. Because I have enough time for him to do his whole circuit, and then I can feign death again if I need and what I'm going to do is I'm sitting here I'm waiting for the eye. And if the their pat is off on the eye, I can just feign death again, let him pat around until the eye is where I can kill it and the boss is over there. So I'm going to feign death, the eye is coming, it's not going to line up. I'm going to mark it so I can see it, and I'm just going to let it go. So sometimes this can take a while and this is going to be a, a place, but you want to make sure you do this right. You got to kill that eye because if the eye starts summoning on the next part, you're going to be in trouble. It's going to be hard. It's going to mess you up. So it's worth taking the time doing this right, killing the eye and then doing the next part. Now, if you're a torn like me, and your noggin fogger wears off right here. Sometimes this is where it'll wear off. You got to use another one because when we feign death in the next spot, the torns are too big. And if you're not in just the right spot, you'll pull the pack there on the right corner in the back. So I'm going to be able to get the eye this time because the eye is a lot faster than the boss. The, boss, the eye is going to come around. I'm going to arcane shot it, auto shot it, it's going to die, and then I'll be ready to set up for the next pull. Alright, the boss is already coming, so I'm going to have to feign death again and wait. When he goes back, I'm going to set up for the next pull. Now there's two ways to do this pull. The safest way is to sacrifice your pet, which is what I'm going to do. The more risky way, but saves your pet, is to scatter shot and concussive shot the reverse all right so if i was going to 
scatter shot and concussive shot, I would concussive shot the furthest reaver away and then scatter shot the one closest. So as I come around the corner, I would concussive shot that reaver over there and then I would scatter shot the one closest to me. Now the risk with that is if your scatter shot gets batched weird, the reaver will still hit you after you scatter shot him. So what I do, just to be safe so that the pull goes good every single time, is I just sacrifice my pet and I'll revive him at the top of the ramp. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sprint my pet in on the first reaver and then send him to the second reaver to clear the path for me to run through. And I'm gonna do it when the boss goes behind the ramp. So when the boss goes behind the ramp, I send him in, send him to the second reaver, I'm going to stay as close to the wall as I can, and I'm going to feign death here after my pet dies, right up line of sight from that pack there. Now I pop up as soon as I clear combat so I can get my feign death on cooldown. I'm going to let my feign death go until there's under 15 seconds because that's when my invis pot's going to wear out. So I pop my invis pot. I run up the ramp staying tight to the side and I'm going to cut as tight as I can across and then right up the next ramp. And if you do it right, when you get up here around the corner, your invis pot will be wearing off and you're golden. If you do it wrong, you're going to have to feign death right here. And that's why I wait. So there's 15 seconds left on my feign death. and. If I have to feign death, it's ready to go. I just feign death and then I set up for the next pull. All right, for the next pull, I'm gonna put my cat down here. I'm gonna tell him to stay. Hop up on the edge, run up the edge, and I'm gonna do the next pull. So for this next pull, you have to have your uh, engineering charge ready to go. You're gonna send your pet in to attack that reaver. If he pulls that pack off to the right, it's fine. If he doesn't, I'm going to tell him to attack it. So he makes it through, he doesn't pull. Oh, he did pull. So I'm going to send him over, and then I'm going to send him back. Let him go down. Got my charge ready. Going to get up here on the door. Going to set off the charge. My pet's going to die. I didn't, I'm not fast enough. I always mess this one up. Get through. Get around the corner. Feign death. Clear combat, pop back up, get my pet back up, feed him, get some mana, get ready to go. Alright, for the next pull, I'm going to send my pet in to the reaver, and then I'm going to send him back to the far reaver back there. That way, he'll definitely despawn. He's going to despawn way before I get to the next feign death spot. And then he's going to get back. I'll feign death around this corner. Get nice and deep into the corner. Feign death. Out of combat. Pop back up. Get my pet back out. Heal him up for the next pull. Now, there's two ways to do this next pull. Again, I do it the safest way with my pet. You can also just run through pop uh, monkey hopefully you dodge a couple attacks and get around the corner and feign death I just I got plenty of food I'll just use my pet the 20 seconds 30 seconds it takes to recover to me is not worth the potential wipe because once you've made it this far you're you're there right you don't want to wipe so I'm gonna get around here my pet's gonna die feign death, get my pet up, and start looking for the pat of dogs, right? Now, they're going to show up when I'm getting ready for the next pull, so I'm going to have to wait, right? There they are right there. Now, if you get here, like if you do a normal run, they're usually not this far when you get here, but they're here, so I'm going to go ahead and mark them up. And then the next pull I do, I'm going to actually have to clear these guys out of my way because I don't want to let them go too far in their pat. 
because then I'm going to have to wait even longer. So I'm going to let them go to their next point, and then I'm going to set up for the next pull. This pull, the way I did it with these dogs, could be a little risky, but you're in a position to where if your pet does die, you can just come right back around the corner, feign death again, and then reset and do it again. But I'll show you how it's done when they pad away. Okay, so they're going to pad away. I'm going to tell my pet to stay back here because I want him to cut tight around the corner. Because sometimes he'll he could take a weird path, right? And I need him to pull the pack, uh, the pack by the fire, and the dogs. All right. So this is going to be a little bit of a tricky pull. So I'm going to send my pet in on the dogs so that he pulls the dogs and the that pack there by the fire, and then I'm going to send him all the way back into there. So he's going, he's sprinting away, he gets low, look, he gets down to 10 health. If he would have died, I would have just feigned death right back there in the corner, but it's fine. He despawns, I'm going to get up to my next reset point, which is right here around this rock. Feign death, get my pet back out, because the dogs are right here, I have to get set up real quick for my next pull. So I'm going to get my pet healed up, and I'm going to get set up. So. We have one more thing we have to do before we can kill the king. We got to kill this pack of dogs. And I already marked them up. But if you don't kill them, they're going to completely mess up your king pool. And they'll, they'll wipe you every time. So we got to kill them. Now, two ways to do it, just like everything else. I could either kite them around these pillars and kill them, which is more risky. Or the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to kill them like I killed the king, which is a lot safer. So I'm going to set a frost trap down. Once they get past that urn, I can start my aim shot. And I'm going to do an aim shot, follow with a multi shot. Then I'm going to send my pet in to get some aggro. And that's important because the pet needs to have some aggro on the dogs so that we can bounce them back and forth just like we're going to bounce the king back and forth. So I'm going to get up here around the corner Try to pop off a couple shots on these dogs as I go. And I'm going to get up here towards the end and I'm going to tell my pet to stay. He stays. Get another pop shot off on the dogs. Get some damage. And start lining them up to kill them. So I'm going to slow him down, kite him around a little bit, let the other dogs catch up, feign death. Now when I feign death, they're going to run all the way back around to my pet, which is going to make it the easiest to kill them. So pick the lead dog, and I'm just going to start shooting. Sometimes they'll have group aggro, and when I start attacking one, you saw how the one turned around, but sometimes they won't. One dog's dead. Get some DPS on this dog. Feign death, send them back. I'm going to circle around the far end. Get set up to pick the dogs off. Alright, so his aggro broke, which is fine. I'm just going to scatter him. Get over here. Get a little DPS. Wait for my feigned death. Feigned death up. Call my pet. Finish him off down here. Once they get low enough, you can finish it off with your pet. Because they are a normal mob. But all three of them together do a lot of damage. So I'm going to finish him off. And I'm just going to get set up for the king fight. Alright, so to reset for the king fight, 
the mobs around the edge are going to keep you in combat. So I'm going to dismiss my pet and then feign death to get out of combat. And if you go over here against this wall, it keeps you out of combat with the guys up top because you're a uh, line of sight with them. So I'm going to come back up, heal my pet up, drink up, mana up, and then we'll get set up for king. Alright, so we got our mana, we're going to be heading up the ramp here. I'm going to tell my pet to stay, so he'll just despawn when I get up to the ramp, and then I can summon him back up when I get in position and uh, set him up. It's just easier that way, I don't have to wait for him to run around. Now, I took another Noggin Fogger. Again, being a fat Tauren, sometimes the king will hit you through the poles, even if you're line of sight and it, it's harder to LOS the caster, so you still want to do a shapeshift. As a, any other race, you'll be fine, but as a Tauren, you're going to want to use, like I said, either a uh, Noggin Fogger or a uh, Savior DB Delight. Now, very important to put your pet behind that wall. And he's got to be deep enough behind the wall that the caster can't get line of sight out on him without going around the corner because he'll stop and cast on your pet and he won't path correctly all right so to start the pull I'm gonna come down by this pillar it's important that you don't go past that next pillar where the dogs dead at because your pet will despawn so the whole time you're doing the fight you're gonna stay around these three pillars uh, the one I'm at and then the two to the right so I'm gonna send my pet in when he hits the top of the ramp I'm gonna tell him to sprint go in attack as soon as he attacks and gets aggro he's sprinting away the caster is always gonna get one cast off on your pet but the goal is to not have King charge like he got one there so he already got my pet to half health which is not good and the caster got another cast off so already not the best pull but you can still recover from not a great pull. All right, so I'll start tagging the king, get an aim shot off, uh, sting, he's going. The whole first part of the fight, your goal is to just drain the mana off the caster. So you're gonna uh, be viper stinging him, draining his mana while kiting around the king. So. Uh, king got a charge off. My goal is to get the king on this one to run around, right? Because their pathing was so far off. I wanted him to run around the far end so that when I get here and feign death, they're closer together. Now the king runs faster than the caster. So if he's a little bit behind, he'll pass and he'll get ahead. And the reason I'm running around this way is because the shaman, I got the shaman this time, dropped the totem over there. And if I run into the totem, he's going to aggro to me. So I had to get a hit off the king before he got to my pet. Caster is there. He starts to cast. I'm going to get a viper sting on him. And line of sight is cast. Again, their pass a little off. So I'm going to get the king to do another path correction. I'm going to have him go all the way around again. So I come back to this furthest pillar, jump off, he'll run all the way around. And I can bait a cast out of the caster here. So he's going to cast, line of sight, he'll stand there and wait. Ah, uh, he didn't get me on that one. They're together, feign death. King resisted my feign death, that will happen. Even with the increased feign death talent, sometimes he'll get you. You just got to kite him around. I'm going to get him to run around. 
I'm gonna have to pop off on the caster to get him to turn around. King gets another charge on me. So already this is not the best pull. And I'm gonna have to keep going, trying to get away from the king. Feign death ready, feign death. Watch the king, the caster is there. I gotta try to get something on him before he kills my pet. So I'm gonna cruise around this corner, get a hit on him. Get him coming back, line of sight is cast, king's coming again. So again, I gotta get the king to do a full lap around. I'm gonna hop off on this end, he's gonna go around. He's going to do a full lap. I'm going to set up again. Caster's there. He got a charge on me again. I'm going to feign death. Oh, he resisted my feign death. So I got to run, try to reset my feign death. So I'm just going to do laps around these pillars to get them, get the time I need. King's up, off the corner. He's going to do a full lap. Caster's there. I'm going to get over here, try to line of sight, and feign death. Okay. So that was ugly. But more often than not, it can happen if you get your timing off. So I got to get up here. I got to get ready. I'm going to bandage. Now, I wanted to wait until they were a long ways away so I couldn't get healing aggro. And then I need to set up and I need to get a hit off on the king. Sometimes their aggro will be together like it is there. I hit the king. And then um, they both came back. But sometimes they won't and you'll have to hit them both. So... Now we got them lined up kind of where we want them. You can feign death and drink, which I just did. And you saw how I mended my pet too. All right, so I'm gonna speed it up until I get to the point where I mess this pull up. So I worked through, I got uh, the caster's mana all gone. So that's the hard part, that's the longest part, is getting the caster's mana gone. And then, when it stops you'll see I messed up on the king right their pathing got off I let him get a melee hit off on my pet and you'll see what happens right here so I didn't get back up there in time he got a melee hit off on my pet killed my pet so there's nothing I can do it, once the pet loses aggro it's almost impossible to get him reset right because I would have to make it all the way back up there without them getting to me with the pet having aggro so I come back down here I feign death I reset there's just nothing else I can do so I reset and I'm set back up for the pull again Gonna start out the same. Send my pet in, he's gonna sprint in. I'm gonna show you the one other pathing uh, that you're gonna use a lot and you'll actually use this one more than doing the full lap around the pillars. And it's the short turnaround form with this first pillar. All right, so we'll get set up. The pet's gonna go in, I'm gonna get my hunter's mark up. Again, he's gonna get to the top of the ramp, charge in. Sprint away. Already a better pull, right? We get one cast off from the caster. No charge from the king. Caster's not going to get a second cast. We're already getting our pathing set up good. All right. Going to wait for the king. I'm going to get a good aim shot off on the king. Starting with that where he, he's right by that mob there. The second one away. That's usually where you want to start your aim shot. All right. So you saw how their aggro didn't 
uh, match up. So I got my Viper Sting off. I'm gonna, you know, let him go, get him lined up, and then this is how you do the short turnaround. So with this first pillar, if you hop off the edge right there by that first pillar, you let him get to you almost, he'll run back towards the ramp where he's gotta go. So he comes to you, then runs back, meets up with the other mob, and then you feign death so that they're closer together again. And then it starts all over. I'm going to will live down the mana off the caster. And this pull actually was almost picture perfect clean. So whittling away his mana. I'm going to get another Viper Sting on him I think right here. Well, maybe not. King. I'm going to have to do another reset on him. Got him together. Alright, speed through it. So after this one's up, I'm going to go through the uh, the way to clear your DM to sell the buffs or to sell your loot. So after you kill the king, you know, the whole point is to be able to do the tribute run, right? It's where you get the good loot. It's where uh, you can sell your buffs. It's how you make your money doing this, right? So I gotta burn his mana out. His mana's almost gone. Now I can start really killing down the king and just tag him whenever I need to to burn out his mana. So I just try to keep an eye on his mana. Whenever he starts to get a little bit of mana, I just viper steam so he's got zero and it just makes the pathing that much easier. Once you get the king down to 20%, you're golden because he just slows right down. It's super easy to just kill him. Now, there is two other uh, casters that you can get. You can get a priest and you can get a mage. I feel like the priest is the easiest one because all of his casts are instant casts. So... He's, the pathing is easy. It's just kind of annoying because he bubbles the king, so it takes longer to kill him. But he is the easiest. And then the mage is not really that hard either. It's just he has really long casts, so it can uh, mess up the, uh, the timing. So no good loot. It is what it is. All right, so cleared it. I'm going to go out here. I'm going to talk to old boy. Uh, see what I got in the chest. Alright, so I talked to him. I got my king buff. I can see what's in the chest. Alright, okay. So I'm going to pause it because I went a little fast. Alright, so you can check what you got in your chest. To get to this point, there's something I had to do. I had to log out to clear my king buff, right? I had a king buff. I had to log out, log back in to clear it. Then I can come in and clear the reavers. So to sell your buffs, you have to clear the reavers and you have to clear the bugs. There's two packs of reavers and one pack of, and one group of bugs, all right? So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up for the first reaver pull here. I'm going to come in here, it's these two reavers, I'm going to tag them, put down a frost trap so they run through a frost trap and slow down, send my pet in again to get some aggro, and then I'm going to kill them just like I did with the king and the dogs before, right? So my pet's here. Now, one thing you have to really watch, and it's not as bad with this pack, but the second pack of reavers is if you let your pet get too far away from you and it despawns then he loses all aggro and then this strategy doesn't work you gotta just feign death restart your pull so i'm gonna do them just like the dogs the reavers don't have any casts so i don't have to worry about getting him all the way around the corner i just want to get him towards the end and then just like the dogs i'm gonna you know pop off a couple uh viper stings get a little bit of DPS on these reavers, have them run around, make sure my cat catches up so he doesn't despawn, and then I'm gonna park him over here by this pillar. So he's parked, pop him get a little bit more DPS. 
and then run to the end and just jump off. Get a little bit more DPS on them. And I, with uh, putting your cat or your pet in front of that pillar, it gives you a little bit more room to work here too, right? So I can go a little bit further up the ramp to get some more DPS, but you still don't want to go past that next pillar. If you go past that next pillar, there's a good chance your pet can despawn and it's going to mess up your pool. All right, so that's the first reaver pool. You're going to do it just like the boss. You just or you just ping pong them back and forth and kill them. The second reaver pool are the reavers downstairs where we sacrificed our pet to get past. All right, so what I've done is I marked the boss. I'm going to come up here and put a frost trap. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my pet to pull. All right, so I'm going to come back here. I'm going to uh, eyes the beast. And I'm going to uh, jump over the edge and pull him. But you have to do it when the boss is away. You don't want to do this when the boss is down here, right? So I hit sprint, attack. I'm going to click off my eyes, tell my pet to follow me. And then I'm going to head upstairs. Now, this is really where you got to watch your pet. Because for some reason, the demons like to throw the cripple on your pet. Even though you already killed the king, they like to turn around and throw a cripple on your pet. So he's lagging behind. I see him lagging behind. I'm going to wait a second, let him try to catch up a little bit. I'm going to throw a mend on him. See, they crippled him. They just turned, they crippled him. And there's nothing I can do about it. I just got to uh, deal with it. Slow down. The Reavers aren't fast though, so that's a plus. You can wait, you know. Give them a little bit of time to catch up. When your sprint gets off cooldown, you can have your pet sprint and catch up too. But the same thing, I'm going to pull them all the way back to where I killed the last pack. Get up there, set my pet up, and just rinse and repeat. So I'll sprint him up here, catch up with me so that he doesn't despawn. I'm going to get up here, park him, kill the Reavers. Same way I killed the King. Rinse and repeat. All right. So I think I'm just going to get up here. Now, if you get lucky, which I don't remember if I got lucky on this one, you can catch the Reavers down here on the corner, and they'll get a little weird path right there. See how he's got a weird path? I can get some extra DPS on him. Now the other one, he went across the middle, so I'm not going to get anything on him. But this guy, I get to get a couple extra hits on. Get some DPS on him. And it's just that much less I got to do kiting him around. So same thing, I'm going to come over here. Park my pet by the pillar. Wait for the Reavers. Get a little DPS on them, and then jump off the edge, kite them around, rinse and repeat. Just a little concussive shot to kind of group them up better. Get a little extra DPS. And again, make sure you don't go past that front pillar so your pet doesn't despawn. Feign death, let them loop around. All right, so the last piece is the bugs. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I set up, I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna put a frost trap and I'm gonna wait uh, I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna line up on the bugs. All right, so first I want to tag the furthest bugs away That I can with my shot so that I can kill the back bugs in case I got to do extra pulls All right now you can do this jump down pull the whole pack use your pet kill them all Right, it's a little bit more risky this way. It's safe. I can do it in like two three pulls if I have to I just feign death reset and it's it's easy. All right, so Aim shot, auto shot the first one, multi shot, come around the corner. Sometimes they'll hit you through the floor and it's kind of a pain, but you just gotta do, you know, 
you'll survive. You just got to get around here and um, wait for them to come up. So first one comes up, I'm going to multi-shot, try to kill a couple more up here if I can. All right, got one. I'm going to feign death, let them run around, let them go back down there. I'm just going to set up and do it again until I kill enough of them, right? So I got two, three on that first pull. Forgetting to put up my frost trap, but I'll go over there and put it up in a second. So they're resetting. All right. So I still got some in the front, some in the back. Go back over here, put my frost trap down. Go back over there and then get ready to pick off some more. Okay, so we finished with the bug pull. Again, you just rinse and repeat. Put your frost trap down, shoot, shoot the bugs. Once you've uh, killed the bugs, you can put slip in the trap. Uh, and you're ready to start selling your buffs. Alright, so I wanted to talk about what talents I used. Alright, I mentioned that improved feign death is important. Nothing is more frustrating to start pulling king and then he resists two or three feign deaths in a row, right? Because he will resist a feign death. It's, it's gonna happen, right? But if it changed together, it's extremely frustrating and it gets more and more difficult to handle. You know, kiting them around, surviving, it's just tough. So, one of the most important talents you're gonna use or need for this is improve feign death. All right, so to get to it, the way I do it is I go three in monster slaying, two in humanoid slaying. You could do it the other way, do uh, two in, or three in human, uh, two in monster but I still like to do a little bit of rating so I put the three in there all right then I do five improved uh, entrapment because catching the reavers but especially the dogs in a frost trap and having them rooted or the bugs at the end get rooted makes it a lot easier to get some extra DPS in then uh, I go in Clever Traps, so I get two points in Clever Traps to increase uh, the duration of the Freezing Traps, and I don't the Fire Traps aren't that important for this, but better Freezing Traps. Then I put uh, three points into Survivalist, which gets me to improve Feign Death. Alright, just the extra health is, is nice to have right then I go to marks I'm gonna do five points into efficiency then I'm gonna do five points into lethal shots uh, three points into Hawkeye one point into aim shot then I'm gonna put a point into uh, hunter's mark then we're going to mortal shots max that out then we go into barrage Scatter shot is a must. It's gonna save your life. All right, then to get down to the next tier, we're gonna put one more into Hunter's Mark, and then uh, weapon specialization. Then we're going to true shot. And then the last three points, we're gonna put into prove aspect. So this is the build I use. Um, for these DM runs, right? And it's still a, a decent uh, rating spec, right? We still got a lot of damage. We got all of the important marksmanship talents, right? All the ones you need for rating. We still have a few points into approved uh, aspect of the Hawk. We don't have the damage for the pets from Beastmaster, so that kind of hurts a little bit. Um, and then, you know, the entrapment and stuff is not really that great for rating, but it's it makes the DM runs so much easier. It's nothing is more frustrating than doing the run and getting halfway through and having the bugs resist your feign death, right? When you're getting ready to go up the ramp or just some random mob resist your feign death when you're deep in or like you use your 
uh, charge on the door at the top of the ramp and then you get in there and then those mobs resist your feign death and it's it's worse now with the instance cap because you don't want to reset that instance like normally where I used to if I got into the courtyard and I messed something up I'd reset it so that you know all the paths are reset everything's reset I can just do it again but now with the instance cap you know you don't want to risk running into that cap so that's why I felt like it was important to do a video like this where I showed the things with the different paths and stuff so that you could see the things that could be different right with the paths because if you get in there and you do die you don't want to reset that instance now because you, you're gonna risk hitting your cap for the day so things might be different right it's not gonna be that clean perfect run every time now you know pats might be in different places you know like the dogs or the pats in the courtyard or the eyes with the slip right those things change if you die and then you come back into the instance so I know it's been a long video thank you everybody for sticking it out um, if you have questions or if there's something that I missed please leave a message in the comments if you like the videos please subscribe I always appreciate it and if you have ideas for another video uh, I'd love to see those too and I'll do my best uh, to help you out in any way I can so thank you again and I'll see you guys later